structured file like JSON or YAML or what? No. So here's, <clears throat> I was actually just thinking about this randomly this morning. Here's the thing. Okay. And I've, I've talked about this before, but it's been a while since I talked about it. Everybody thinks JSON or whatever is so great because the code handles the parsing for you and parsing is so hard or whatever. And it's like, Hey, parsing is not actually hard, especially if it's a binary file format, it's very simple. Uh, but B the problem is parsing is like at least two different things, right? It's reading the primitive types, right? Like the, the numbers and strings and whatever, whatever's in the file, right? That's one part of parsing. But the other part of parsing is making sure that what's in the file is what you expect to be in the file and knowing where the things are and, and putting the data that you want in the correct place that you want it. Right. And the problem with stuff like JSON is it doesn't really do this second part, right? Cause the JSON file could have anything. Right. And so when you have your own format, you will end up doing that validation when you load the file. And then from then on, there's no uncertainty or ambiguity about what data is where, you know, everything exists, you know, everything is good, right? If you like loaded some JSON into some tree, you got, you still have no idea what's in there. So what you end up, I mean, if you're disciplined and you've done this, where you do your own formats and you know how clean it should be, then you do a validation step and you copy the data out or you point to it or something so that you don't have to random access the JSON all the time. But the fail case is to random access the JSON data all the time. Cause that's, what's easy. Right. And so that's what people do. And so a, it's much slower and B like at runtime, not even at load time, but at runtime, it's much slower because you've got all this like weird tree ass data all over the place. But secondly, you still don't know what's in there and you're like dynamically accessing it all the time from your program. And so you've moved this, uh, frontier of uncertainty from merely the loading time into all of your program. And now like all the time, anytime you do an operation that reads the JSON stuff, you have to check to see if the thing that you're looking for is there. And what do you do if it's not? Oh, that's a weird error. I guess, I guess we'll just drop that error on the floor, just like we do with all error reporting in modern software. Right? So it's really not very good <laughs> the way people do these things. And again, with some discipline, you can, you can avoid falling into the deepest part of that trap, but most people don't. You always thought that versioning of serialized data is a fairly hard problem. No. Um, it's only really hard if you want forward compatibility. And even then it's not that hard. It's not that hard, but again, JSON doesn't solve that problem for you. This, this is what happens in programming. People say stuff like this. I thought, I thought versioning of serialized data is a hard problem. Okay. But like JSON doesn't solve that for you. Right. It'll, if for some reason they change the way strings are stored or whatever, then your loading code will get that update, but they're never going to change the way strings are stored in JSON or whatever. Right. Um, except, except for maybe very minor tweaks. No, but, but your, again, the whole thing I was saying about validation, not happening is the biggest part of versioning. And it doesn't do that for you at all. So if you want to do versioning in a JSON file of like, here's what's supposed to be here. And based on the version, I know what to look for and all this, you have to write that yourself anyway. Right? So like, so like if I'm storing an entity in a JSON, let's make it very concrete. If I'm storing an entity in a JSON file, there's going to be fields for like, here's the type of the entity. Here's the serial number of it in the system. Um, here's the names and values is stored in all the fields of the entity, right? Here's like the texture map and here's the position coordinates and all these things. Okay. 
if I add a field to the entity, but it's only there in entity version 37 and later, JSON doesn't know anything about that at all. You have to do it yourself anyway. So like these arguments, these arguments about like, oh, you should use this serialization system because blah, blah, blah are like, they're in deeply incorrect arguments most of the time. One major thing you're forgetting is JSON is human readable via text editor. No, I'm not forgetting that at all. Our entity format is human readable via text editor, and it's more readable because it's not so full of crap. I mean, JSON isn't the worst, right? XML is the absolute worst, but like, look, dude. Oh no. Hey, I'll show you exactly. Let me make this very concrete for you. All right. We're in the overworld. All right. Here's the character. 57, 43, 60, right? So I can go to Sokoban, uh, run tree, data, levels, overworlds, and I can go to 57, 43, 60, all right? And then I can drag this over here, and that's my entity. In text format, we also have a binary format that we use when we ship the game. Okay, this is tremendously more readable. It's also faster to load. And it has bonuses like floating point values will never diverge because we store the hex float. JSON is fine for prototyping. I mean, maybe, but like once you've written this code once, it's easy. Yeah, there's various things. So in fact, this is actually, this has a whole layer of extra stuff. So when you see a star here, it means that this value has changed from the default value and will be loaded. If there's no star, it means um, that it's the default value. And so we actually just throw away these lines and we use the default value for the entity. And what that means is even if you've got entities serialized out, you can change the default value of a field and it'll take effect in all entities if you desire that. All right. So it's actually a very expressive, but also very specific file format or expressive is the wrong word, but it's, it's very good for how tight and specific it is. And then we have a binary format of this as well, where we pack a bunch of them together. Is there a hierarchical one? Um, in our, uh, we, we have limited hierarchies in entities. Um, actually, this is actually hierarchical, but uh, these are all empty strings, so you don't see it. But this is like, this is an array of, of 12 strings, right? And so forth. But the, the thing is, when you start, if you start getting totally wackadoodle about hierarchical data, it starts to become harder to manage and you don't necessarily want that in an entity system internally to your game. So that's a whole different question of a semicolon prefix lines comments. Um, those are, those are just to help make it readable. So those are the names of the entity fields, right? So if I want to go look for the orientation or the position or whatever, right? I just look for that name, but the system doesn't read the name. You could, if you were like, doing extra, extra, extra validation, but we don't, we actually skip the name because the system knows uh, what fields are in what order based on the version number, um, which is this one, you know, it ignore, basically when it sees a semicolon, it goes to the next line when it's loading, but we can use that to know what the hell these fields are.